The Iranian consulate in Syria's capital Damascus came under attack yesterday. Iran has accused Israel of bombing the embassy complex. Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps says seven officers have been killed in the attack. A senior commander of the elite Quds force was among the people killed. Israel has refused to comment on the attack. Tehran, however, has vowed vengeance, saying that the retaliation will be of the same magnitude. Meanwhile, Iran's foreign minister said Benjamin Netanyahu has completely lost his mental balance. The Lebanon-based Hezbollah group has also threatened Israel after the attack. They say that Israel will pay for killing officials from Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps. Hezbollah says that the enemy will face punishment and revenge for the crime. People in Iran condemned the embassy attack by burning Israeli and American flags. The protest took place in Iran's capital, Tehran. Crowds took to the streets carrying Palestinian flags and chanting slogans of revenge and death to America. Some were also seen carrying pictures of Qasem Soleimani, a general in Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps who was killed in an American airstrike in 2020. At least five people working for the non-governmental organization World Central Kitchen were killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. This includes citizens of Poland, Australia and the UK as well as one Palestinian. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has demanded accountability for the death of their citizen. Israel says that it is conducting a thorough review of the incident. North Korea has fired a ballistic missile into the Sea of Japan. This is according to the South Korean military. The launch also drew him an immediate condemnation from Japan. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says that the missile launch affects the peace and stability of the region. However, he added that there was no, con no confirmed damage due to the missile. Indonesia's president-elect Prabowo Subianto met with Chinese President Xi Jinping yesterday. Xi praised Indonesia's strong ties with China during the meeting. He described Prabowo as an old friend of the Chinese people. Meanwhile, Prabowo reportedly pledged to develop closer Indonesia-China relations. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi will be sworn in for a third consecutive term today. He will reportedly take oath in the new capital being built outside Cairo. Al-Sisi will officially begin his term on Wednesday and it is supposed to be his last stint as president. The Democratic Republic of Congo now has its first ever female Prime Minister. President Felix Shishikedi appointed Judith Suminwa as PM. Following the appointment, she vowed to work for peace and development in the DRC. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is on his way to Paris. He's on a five-day trip to France and Belgium. Blinken will meet French President Emmanuel Macron in Paris to discuss issues ranging from the war in Gaza to the war in Ukraine. Then Blinken will attend the NATO Foreign Ministers meeting in Belgium's capital, Brussels. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden will travel to Baltimore City on Friday. His visit follows the deadly collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge last week. Biden is expected to meet with state and local leaders, including Maryland Governor Wes Moore. Biden will also tour the area of the accident. In the U.S. city of Atlanta, a car rammed into the gates of the local Federal Bureau of Investigation office. The suspect was ar arrested after he got out of the vehicle. He was taken to a hospital for evaluation and is now in police custody. The suspect's motives are not yet known. A large fire broke out at a factory in the Russian city of Yekaterinburg. The fire broke out on the roof of a workshop that produced electricity transformers. Fifteen people managed to evacuate the site. No fatalities or injuries have been reported. In climate news, a giant part of the iconic Highway 1 in the U.S. state of California has collapsed into the ocean. This is after heavy rain battered the region. At least 1,600 people were left stranded after the highway collapsed. Several had to spend the night in their vehicles. 
the South American country of Venezuela has seen a record number of wildfires this year. Satellite data shows over 30,000 fires uh, that sprung up between January and March. This is according to neighboring Brazil's Space Research Agency. Venezuela's wildfires have been exacerbated due to a widespread drought in the region. The World Bank has approved a $750 million loan to Colombia. The loan is expected to help the country fight climate change. Colombia is looking to invest in solar energy, offshore wind energy and green hydrogen. This will help the country boost its energy production and reduce carbon emissions. Three people were killed by an avalanche in the Zermatt region of the Swiss Alps. Reports say that the avalanche likely occurred due to heavy winds and snowfall. According to local authorities, some people could be missing. Rescue teams are having a difficult time assessing the area because a lot of snow has accumulated. Reports say the region still risks seeing a major avalanche. Britain's Environment Agency says the country could struggle with severe water shortages this year if the summer turns out to be hotter and drier than usual. Scientists believe that population growth and the lack of appropriate infrastructure may lead to water scarcity. No new water reservoirs have been built in Britain over the last three decades. Meanwhile, several wetlands have been drained to build farms and houses. Thick clouds of dust engulfed Greece yesterday. A dust storm severely impacted Athens and Thessalonica, where temperatures rose as high as 31 degrees Celsius. Experts have asked asthma patients to avoid outdoor activities. In the last few days, dust storms have been seen in European nations like Greece, France and Switzerland. A new study published in the journal Nature Food has found that more than 80% of agriculture subsidies from the European Union support animal product farms. The report says that this is undermining the EU's climate targets. Global food systems account for about a third of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions. Livestock is a significant contributor to this. The new study says that by making direct payments to livestock farmers, the EU is funding high emission agriculture in the region. In the Netherlands, seven environmental groups have filed a case against the oil giant Shell. They accuse Shell of failing to implement a 2021 court ruling that ordered the company to reduce its carbon emissions by 45% by the year 2023. Meanwhile, Shell has, find, uh, Shell has filed an appeal against the ruling. The firm says that the 2021 order is ineffective and it is counterproductive in addressing climate change. On to business and tech news. Microsoft will now sell its office products and online video call te app Teams separately worldwide. The company says that the move aims to address regulatory concerns and give customers more flexible options. It comes six months after Microsoft separated the products in Europe. The European Commission is investigating Microsoft for selling Office and Teams together. Competitors have alleged that bundling the two products gives Microsoft an unfair advantage in the market. Google has agreed to destroy billions of data records to settle a lawsuit in the US. The tech giant has been accused of tracking its users even when they were browsing privately using its incognito mode. Under the settlement, Google will update disclosures about what it collects in incognito browsing. The firm will also let incognito users block third-party cookies for five years. OpenAI will allow users to access the artificial intelligence chatbot ChatGPT without signing up on the platform. The firm says that the move aims to make AI more accessible. The new feature will be rolled out in phases starting this week. OpenAI says it has implemented additional safeguards for users accessing ChatGPT without an account. This includes blocking certain prompts and output in certain categories to maintain ChatGPT's safety standards. The US and UK have announced a partnership to test artificial intelligence models. Two countries, uh, the two countries will work together to test the safety of advanced AI models. Under the agreement, AI safety institutes from both the countries will work together to build a common AI safety testing system. They'll also perform at least one joint testing exercise on a publicly accessible AI platform. 
Shares of Trump Media and Technology Group plummeted by over 20% yesterday. The company is owned uh, majority owned by former U.S. President Donald Trump. This comes after the firm disclosed that it recorded over $58 million in losses in 2023. The social media firm debuted on the New York Stock Exchange last week. Shares of a Chinese smartphone maker Xiaomi surged by as much as 16% today. This added over $7.6 billion to the firm's market valuation. This comes after the firm launched its first electric car, the SU7, last week. Xiaomi received over 90,000 orders for the car in the first 24 hours of its launch. Japan has approved about $4 billion in subsidies for the chipmaker Rapidus Corporation. The fund will help the firm in uh, the research and development of advanced chip packaging systems. In 2022, Rapidus was uh, jointly founded by the Japanese government and eight Japanese companies. The government had previously provided over $2 billion in subsidies to the firm. Supply chain management firm UPS has become the primary air cargo provider for the United States Postal Service. This was after the US ended its 20-year contract with FedEx. UPS has said that it will manage the majority of air cargo for the US Postal Service. The US has also said that its contract with UPS will be for a minimum of five and a half years. United Airlines has offered voluntary unpaid leaves to its pilots. Under the voluntary program, pilots can take unpaid time off for the whole month of May, or they can opt for a blank, uh, blank schedule where they will be allowed to pick and trade their trips with other pilots. The firm says that the move aims to address excess staffing issues. United Airlines has been facing delays in aircraft deliveries from Boeing, which has impacted its fleet capacity. Banking giant Citigroup is laying off 430 employees in New York City. The layoffs will impact over 360 employees of the firm's banking unit in the city. The rest of the job cuts will be implemented in the technology and broker-dealer units of the firm. Citigroup has been going through an organizational restructuring process. The firm has laid off over 20,000 work workers under the program. Moving to sports, we start with cricket and the IPL. The Rajasthan Royals beat the Mumbai Indians by six wickets yesterday. Opting to bowl first, Rajasthan restricted Mumbai to 125 for nine. Then Riyan Parag smashed an unbeaten 54 in 39 bowls to help Rajasthan win the match. This was Mumbai's third straight defeat. Hardik Pandya was booed again at the Wankade Stadium during the Mumbai vs Rajasthan match. This happened when his name was called out for the toss. The person conducting the toss had to ask spectators to behave. Fans have been upset since Hardik Pandya replaced Rohit Sharma as the captain for the Mumbai Indians. India's cricket board, the BCCI, will reportedly meet the IPL team owners on April 16th. Reports say that the discussions will focus on the upcoming IPL auction, team budgets and player retention. The BCCI has extended the invitation to at least 10 IPL teams. The informal meet will take place in the Indian city of Ahmedabad. In football, Germany's national team is changing the design of the number 44 on their jerseys. This is due to concerns about its resemblance to the symbol used by Nazi SS units. The SS was a paramilitary unit in Nazi Germany known for committing atrocities during World War II. The decision to ban the number has been made ahead of the European Championship. Adidas, the German team's official supplier, will no longer offer the number 44 for customizing jerseys. Atletico Madrid beat Villarreal 2-1 in a La Liga match yesterday. Axel Witzels gave Atletico the lead just nine minutes into the game. Villarreal leveled the score in the 50th minute thanks to an Alexander Solot strike. But then, substitute Sol Niguez scored in the 87th, helping Atletico get a hard-fought win. In tennis, Novak Djokovic is set to become the oldest world number one in the history of ATP rankings. The Serb will achieve this feat this Sunday. He will surpass Roger Federer, who previously held the record. 
Meanwhile, India's Sumit Nagal has attained his career-high tennis ranking of world number 95. This comes as a result of his prolific performances recently. Nagal's previous best rank was 97 in February, after he won the Chennai Open. Back in January, Nagal grabbed headlines for being the first Indian to knock out a seeded player in a Grand Slam since 1989. In chess, Grandmaster Arjun Erigaisi has replaced five-time world champion Vishwanathan Anand as the top-ranked Indian player in the official FIDE rankings list. In March, he had overtaken Anand in the live ratings list. Erigaisi is currently seventh in world rankings. Mirabai Chanu is, has become the only Indian weightlifter to qualify for this year's Olympics in Paris. She returned to action yesterday at the Weightlifting World Cup in Thailand. Chanu finished third in Group B of the women's 49kg division. The Olympic medalist last competed at the 2023 Asian Games in China. The owners of Formula One, Liberty Media, have confirmed the takeover of MotoGP's parent company, Dorna Sports. The acquisition is worth 4.5 billion US dollars. Liberty Media will have an 86% stake and Dorna will retain 14% of their equity. The acquisition is expected to be completed by the end of this year. In entertainment news, the 12th annual iHeartRadio Music Awards ceremony was held in Los Angeles. And here are some of the highlights. Uh, uh, Sasa dominated the night with multiple awards like R&B Song and Album of the Year. Beyonce was felicitated with the Innovator Award. Cher received the Icon Award. And no points for guessing, but Taylor Swift went home with the Artist of the Year trophy. Shakira revealed in an interview that her sons absolutely hated the Barbie movie. Her sons were not happy with the portrayal of men in the film. They found it emasculating. Shakira says she agrees with their opinion to a certain extent. She stated that she likes pop culture when it attempts to empower women without robbing men of their possibility to be men. Margot Rob the Margot Robbie star of Barbie was one of the most popular films of 2023. The rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, and Ty Dolla Sign have decided to stop the listening parties of their album Vultures. These large-scale playbacks were scheduled to take place at multiple venues in the US this month. No explanation has been given as to why the events were cancelled. Actor Michael Stuhlbarg was assaulted in New York City with a rock. According to the police, he was out for a jog when a 27-year-old hit him in the back of the neck with a rock. Stuhlberg uh, chased the assaulter, who was later arrested by, pol by the police. The actor sustained small bruises and declined medical attention. According to reports, Sam uh, Raimi might be directing a Spider-Man film. He started the comics uh, blockbuster cinema era with Tobey Maguire with the 2002 Spider-Man film. Addressing the rumors, uh, Raimi has said that uh, he has read about it, but he is not working on it yet. He feels that uh, Marvel and Columbia are so successful with the current Spider-Man films, he doesn't know why they would go back to him. Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst, uh, the kissing scene from, the, uh, from 2002 Spider-Man was one of the most iconic scenes in film, but Dunst says that it was not a fun experience to shoot. She felt miserable when they shot the scene as Maguire was hanging upside down. Maguire had difficulty breathing as there was pouring rain, and Dunst said she felt that she was resuscitating him. Priyanka Chopra has lent her voice as a narrator to the upcoming film Tiger. She said that the film took eight years to complete. The film follows the story of a tigress called Amba who shares a beautiful bond with her cubs. Chopra calls the film a tale of love, conflict, hunger, survival and so much more. The film will start streaming on April 22nd. The trailer of the upcoming season of Doctor Who has been released. It shows the central character of the rogue Time Lord uh, traveling back into the Victorian era. Actor uh, Nikuti Gatwa will play the role of the Doctor and uh, Millie Gibson will be his partner. The Bridgerton star Golda Rocheville will also be seen in the show. The new season will release in May. 
Television presenter Andy Cohen is guilty of spreading conspiracy theories about Kate Middleton's absence. He expresses heartbreak over the news about Princess Kate. Someone in his newsroom even called him a fool. This comes after a viral video showed the princess out with her husband William and Cohen said that the woman in the video was not Kate. Acclaimed actor Barbara Rush has passed away at the age of 97. She was at a care home in Westlake uh, Village in California. The actor worked in films and television shows for over six decades. Rush was known for her roles in movies like It Came From Outer Space and Peyton Palace. She is survived by two children.